Now, how many of y'all have ever heard of Taft Price or his book, Fly Tying, An International Guide of Over 400 Fly Patterns? We're gonna be tying one of the patterns from it today. I think you're gonna like it. So if you've ever heard of him or tied anything from this book, you know, let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Matt. Thanks for stopping by. So the pattern I found in this British published book is actually an American pattern created by Calvert Bird, a San Francisco, Californian tire uh, throughout the mid 1900s. You might have heard of him. He's pretty famous for the bird's nest, but he's got several other patterns. And what I'm going to be doing today is bird stonefly. Now, I couldn't find a whole lot of other history about Cal Bird or this pattern in particular, other than it was created sometime in the 1960s. Now, he was a fisherman and tire out west, so this is pretty natural for him to come up with one of these big stoneflies. But it's a pretty cool pattern, not very hard to tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. There it is in the vise, Cal Bird's stonefly. Now, the pattern calls for this in a size four to eight long shank hook. I'm tying it down to eight. 3X long here. And I'm gonna use black thread. I'm gonna use a 70 denier, but feel free to go to a 140 or a 6 odd if you want, but go ahead and take a base down all the way to the start of the bend. Now, watch the point of their hook. Now, I know most of you fishermen know that. Testing the sharpness on your hook, right? Just uh, see if it slides on your thumb now, and if it doesn't, it's pretty sharp. This one's pretty sharp. So for the tail, just go ahead and grab your um, two hairs from a brown bear's paw. Exactly what the recipe says, right? You don't have that? Um, me neither. But I'm wondering what else looks like a bear's paw hair. I, I grabbed some regular bear's hair and it was pretty thin. So I'm just grabbing the thickest stuff I have, which is this moose hair. Not moose mane, just moose hair. But even this is pretty thin when you get down to the tips. And it's a pretty long tail, but you know, maybe not a whole body length. I'm gonna just try this in right here. And what if you don't have moose or, you know, hairs from a brown bear's paw? I, I don't know, use whatever you want. I think you could use bucktail. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw a wrap underneath there. Just, just kinda prop it up, maybe just a little bit. All right. Now, let's go ahead. I'm just going to catch this in. Probably not necessary, but I'm going to, I want to keep that, the body as smooth as possible. Now, alrighty, that looks fine right there. Got a little fuzz somewhere. Where'd that come from? I don't know. But let's take the thread back and then catch in our rib. And the rib on this guy, it's a, uh, Calls for a furnace, furnace hackle. Um, I think any brown's gonna work, but I do have a furnace colored right here. And this is just from an Indian uh, saddle, a, a cheap saddle. And I'm gonna kinda catch it in a little bit on my side right here so that when I first start wrapping it, um, it will be right coming out from this side. I'll leave that little stem right there. Just try to keep my body even as I go up. Now I'm going to tie in some floss and it calls for a burnt orange, but some of the pictures I've seen, which aren't very many, it was kind of a burgundy. And with this color floss and um, the, the rib we're going to be putting on it, it does remind me a little bit of a Hardy's favorite, if you remember that fly. So I'm going to catch this in and I'm going to wrap it down and up. So I get at least two layers. Now you probably don't necessarily need to. I mean, we're not doing it for thickness, but as with any flosses, and this is a synthetic, so it doesn't look too much like a silk, but when they get wet, they can be a little translucent. So I'm going to take this down and back up. That will give me at least two layers and that will make it a little bit richer in color. That's really the only reason I want to do two layers here but I'll take it all the way back and then put one wrap right behind the, that hackle just to cover all my black threads, maybe one or two wraps. We'll see what it needs.
Okay, I think so. that's fine. So let's just try to keep it smooth and then take this on up front. If it starts flattening out on you, give it a clockwise spin. And if it starts tightening up on you, then give it a counterclockwise spin. You can treat this floss pretty much just like a thread. Okay, a couple of wraps. Let's snip this off and then we'll wrap this hackle up for our rib. And I don't have a whole lot uh, to work with, but I'm going to live on the edge. I'm going to try to wrap this without my hackle pliers because I'm only going to take maybe six wraps up. Okay, I think that's probably seven, maybe eight, but that's fine. We got it up here and caught in. Now let's snip this excess off. Now we are going to trim this. That's a pretty cool looking palmered hackle right there, but that's not how the flies designed or tied. It snipped really short. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put a half hitch right here just because when I'm spinning this thing around to snip it, um, it's a good chance that I will un unwind this thread. And then if you do that, you'll just make a big mess of it. So I've got several wraps to catch it off. And then I um, put a half hitch, but I'm going to try to get these feathers these fibers right here out so that it'll look a little bit better when I trim it. Okay, that should be fine right there. Now just trim this short all the way around. Okay, that might be short enough. Let's see, let's just go a little bit shorter here. Okay, I think that's going to work for us. Now, take a medium-sized clunk of brown bucktail. I'm going to put it in my hair stacker. But before I put it on, I'm going to put a little wax on here. This will sometimes just help this bind a little bit. But let's see how well this stacked right here. Um, okay, I think. And like always, I take a little bit more than I need so that I can grab it you know, close to the tips and then thin it out with some of the, the shorter ones right there. And it's a pretty long tail. Um, maybe not as far back as that, um, you know, hairs from the brown bear's paw, but I'd say past the bend of the hook. So I'm gonna do this little trick right here. I've got a little bit of wax on my thread. Let's back that up a little bit because we've got a, a fair size hackle to put on it. But I'm gonna put one wrap just around the hair and bring it back down and now I'm pull it tight right here and it's going to flare on you but if you don't want the back to flare too much like it did right there which it will especially depending on what type of uh, you know bucktail you have is it is it a little bit of hollow if you need to just take a few medium wraps going back right there and just to try to get that laying flat now you can go up forward and put some tighter wraps so let's do one more tight one right here and I'm going to snip this off. And I think the best way to snip this and try and get a little taper going down is uh, pull it up at about a 45 degree angle and see I got some hairs coming around the hook. All right. So I've got all the hairs that I'm going to trim in my fingers right now. So I'm going to pull it forward at about a 45 degree angle and then put my scissors in here kind of parallel to the hook and now we've got a little bit of a taper right there you might want to just um, take a couple extra snips here but I'm going to ramp this down and my goal here is to get a smooth under layer where I can wrap this hackle so spend a few wraps right here just to try to smooth this out, get a nice even ramp. 
I'm not really doing that to hide the, the fiber sticking out, but just to make it a smoother base for wrapping our hackle. Okay, that's a little bit uh, sticking down in me, in my vise there. Now, just a brown hackle right here. And I, I already measured this one fairly long. It's a, it's a pretty big fly. And I'm gonna catch it in right back here toward the back of the head, but kind of uh, close to that, um, you know, bucktail. And I want the concave side kind of facing back. I think that will get us a better lay to these fibers. So wrap that stem up a little bit. I'm gonna bend it right here and give me an easier access to snip it off. Okay, now our hackle is tied in. I'm gonna smooth that little lump down right there. Leave my thread up front where I'm gonna catch it off. And on this one, how many wraps? Oh, a good four or five, uh, maybe six if you can get it. Just depends on the fiber density of the feather you're using and how much room you left on the head, but you do want it to be pretty bushy. It's a big dry fly and you want it to float through some pretty, you know, heavy, rough water. I wasn't counting. I think that's probably five. But let's go ahead and catch this off. A couple of tight wraps right there. And I think we're going to be good. Now I want to just do a couple extra right there before I snip this tip off. Now let's work on our head. So let's just, I'm going to pull this back. Take a few wraps. I don't want to go far back on it because I don't want these, these fibers swept back. I want them still pretty much coming off the hook perpendicular. And they are, and we've got room for a whip finish there. So let's go ahead and do that. Four or five turns right here. Try not to trap any of these fibers sticking forward. I mean, if you do, just trim them. But if you don't, it makes it a little easier, less to trim. So poke my scissors through right there, and there you go. Critique of this fly, and could have possibly used a little bit more on this bucktail, but yeah, how about that, that hair for the bear's paw back there? I don't think this thing's gonna catch fish without that. I'm kidding. But anyway, it's a pretty cool looking fly. I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.